In this problem, we need to find a confidence interval. So the original population in this uh, example has a random variable that's a categorical variable. And we're interested in each of the individuals in the population of whether, yes, they're in the category or no, they're not. The population parameter is the proportion of individuals in the population who uh, are in the category. A sample of 143 individuals is selected, of which there are 117 successes, or in other words, there's 117 of them that are, that are yeses to the question, are you in the category? So we're interested in the dis distribution of all the sample proportions of uh, samples of size 143. We know that the distribution of those sample proportions is normally distributed with a mean equal to the original probability of success and the standard deviation the standard deviation of this distribution of sample proportions is equal to the square root of p times q divided by n now we're interested in finding a confidence interval with a, conf with a level of confidence of 99.5%. So let's look at our third distribution here. In proportion problems, a third distribution is going to be a standard normal distribution. Of course, where the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. Now, some things that we can calculate at this particular point is our, the proportion of our sample which of course is the number of successes divided by the sample size. In our particular case, p hat is 117 over 143. The other thing that we can do some calculating on is we can search for this z value so that between minus z and z, there is 99.5% of the population. What we want to do is build a confidence interval, so let's begin to build an R script that will help us do that job. Let's begin with the given information. We know that our sample size was 143. Our number of successes is 117. The other piece of given information is the confidence level, which is 99.5 percent. So there's the given information. Let's begin to calculate the things that we need to know. One of the things that we need to know is what this z is. We also need to know what p hat is. So let's ask r to calculate each of those. p hat will be r divided by n. It's a little more complicated to find out what z is. Let's define alpha to be the area that's outside of this confidence level. So it's these two tails. Now notice that that can be found easily because one is the total area under the curve minus the confidence level, and we've already told R what that is. So one minus the confidence level will be this red area outside of this confidence region. There are two tails, two, ta two symmetric congruent tails um, in alpha. We'd like to know the area in just one of those tails. Since they're both the same size, the area in one tail is going to be alpha divided by 2. So to find z, we, we will need to use a q function. So z is going to be q of something. Since this is a normal distribution, it'll be a q norm. And what we need to give to Q norm is the area below the Z value that we're looking for. So we need to find this area. That's the confidence level plus one tail, or it's one, the total area under the curve, minus a tail. There's those two different ways of calculating it. The way that shows up most often in textbooks is the one minus uh, the tail. But of course, either of those will give the same calculation for that area. 
the area below Z is either 1 minus this tail or it's the confidence level plus the tail. So that's going to tell us what the Z value is. Now another thing that we need to know is the standard deviation of this distribution. We don't know that because we don't know what P is and so we can't find out what Q is. Q is the probability of failure. It's always 1 minus P. So we don't know what P is. So we'll approximate this with the, the best information we have available. We can find P hat, so therefore we can find Q hat, and this will be our best approximation, and we will call that the standard error, or SE. So let's build that into our, our script. We already have R calculating P hat in our script, so Q, Q hat is just going to be 1 minus P hat. So now we've got all the pieces needed to find this standard error. The standard error is the square root of... So SE is equal to the square root of P hat times Q hat divided by N. So now we know a good approximation for the standard deviation of this distribution. We know that Z is telling us the number of standard deviations I need to be away from uh, the mean. Uh, to have 99.5% between minus Z and Z. And so therefore we'll calculate the, the margin of error, which is going to be Z, the number of standard deviations we need, times SE, which is our best approximation for the standard deviation. Then to, to find the confidence interval, we'll need to find the lower bound, which is going to be found by taking the P hat minus that margin of error, the upper bound will be p hat plus that margin of error, and then we'll have, we need to ask R to print those out for the lower bound and the upper bound. And then we could write that result in an interval with the lower bound as a decimal number, comma the upper bound as that decimal number. Okay, that's the idea. Good luck.